it was one of the questions, Darren. What was the next one? Yeah, so the next one is about uh, advanced surfacing, both um, sub-D modeling as well as just abilities to trim and intersect surfaces. So sub-D modeling is something we have a partner for right now. Um, uh, uh, and uh, we're, we're, uh, we're very happy. They have a great, great product. Uh, you, should, you can check it out, Power Surfacing by NPower. Uh, old friends of ours, and um, uh, we have uh, uh, also, uh, I would say that, be fair to say that in our vision is to add more and more surfacing tools. First of all, many of you know, I hope you know, that you can model with surfaces today in Onshape. You can use our, our standard modeling commands, have a surface option that will create surfaces, say with an extrude or something. Many Many of you know that because Onshape has always been like that. What you may not know is that recently we have the ability to use those surfaces in an assembly. So you can take um, a collection of even, say, a thousand surfaces you've imported them, bring them into an assembly, group them, and use them essentially like a part. You do the same thing with sketches and assemblies too, by the way. So that's one interesting use case. In terms of more tools to do things like trim and sew, I do get requests for that. I would say that's in our vision. That's something we'd love to add someday. And, you know, it's always about prioritizing. As you can tell from this webinar, we have a, a very, very large user base. And we're always trying to make the right decisions about how, how to prioritize what's of interest. But I think that um, I can say that surface trimming and sewing would be something we that would be in our vision. It's something we would love to add. And it's a question of exactly when. Right. And, and people are asking about things like custom properties, and I would say all of those types of questions yeah. are, all those small enhancements, they're definitely on our roadmap. Um, we understand the importance of them, and it is something we're working on. And the beauty with Onshape is we put out releases every three weeks, not once a year. Yeah. So, so when we talk roadmap, we are talking a matter of months. Yeah, I think the, the best thing I can do is I'll tell you what's in our vision and what's not. Like, like working on FEA and simulation, hey, that's not in our vision for us to do. That's something we're relying on our great partners to do. Working on surface surface trimming, sewing, working on custom properties, things like that are in our vision, and we, we will get there. And I, I am very proud, and I hope you are, of the rate that we add functions every three weeks. We hope you're happy with that. And so, um, so uh, like I said, if you haven't seen Onshape lately, you haven't seen it. We're adding so much to it all the time. Uh, next yeah, there's a great question about collaboration. Um, what's the typical team size where people are working together inside a document? And um, what's the most we've seen, and, and what do we recommend? Okay, typical team size in a document. So I would say very typical would be, you know, 2 to 12, you know, people would be, you know, be a sweet spot. I'm looking at Darren, too. What's the largest I've seen? I don't know, maybe... Tens, you know, 30, 40, something yeah, like that. Yeah. I've never seen anyone do hundreds or thousands. Um, so I would say, you know, a few, a few to to a dozen is kind I'll of the range. Down. I would say. And remember, I want to also not 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 directly your your uh, your question, but I want to add a comment that it's not just about when you decide to meet. People are like, well, I, I don't know how often I would decide to meet and work on a part. It's not really about deciding to collaborate. It's about the fact that you no longer have to worry about it. You no longer have to worry when you open someone else's opening, not just the part, but think of an assembly. That's where it really comes in. So I know one customer has about a dozen people working on a very interesting new product, um, uh, machinery product. And and I, when I look over their shoulders, sometimes I'll see you know eight or ten people happen to be in the assembly, it's not a problem. They're all enjoying the benefit of knowing they're looking at the latest version. They're not going to mess up anyone else when they add a part. When they're adding a part, they're adding it in the up-to-the-moment master version assembly. It's kind of like the way we used to all work together in one room. If you're old like me, you remember big design teams in a room, and in the center was a mock-up of the product. So, so what was the other part of the question? Was the size and... The maximum we've seen. and maximum we've seen. Um, the uh, you know maximum would be tens of people in one one document. Um, I do know one of the interesting feature requests one day I got from one of our users. He said, "John, um, I I'm having trouble. We have so many people collaborating. I have trouble distinguishing by the initial 
because we have a lot of people with the first initial J or P or whatever, or maybe J and P. So that's one of the things that drove us to put the photos in. I hope you've all noticed that. You can put a profile photo in, shows up as your collaboration queue. Right. Here's a great question. It's it's about a, a user who, is, he's a SolidWorks user for 12 years with an EPDM investment, and he's asking, how do we recommend he starts integrating Onshape into his workflows alongside SolidWorks? Great question. We see that a lot. People have, typically they even have more than one system. What do you find? It's, it, one would be easy. Usually there's like, oh, we're using, you know, SolidWorks and we're using some Katia, or we're using Rhino, and we have, we have one or two data management systems. So how do you start? Well, the, the typical way is pick a project. You know, pick a project that's coming up. Um, don't try to migrate everything. Bad idea. Okay? Pick a project that's coming up. It could be a new product design. It could be some advanced R&D you're doing. It could be some fixturing and tooling. Pick a new project and try that project in Unshape. Um, uh, you know, pick one project, use Onshape for the design, use Onshape for the data management and version control, which is built in. No servers to set up. People are like, oh, I don't want to set up another PDM system. There's nothing to set up. By the way, those of you out there who use Onshape, who's never tried version control, guess what? Every change you've ever made is all recorded there. You can go back to previous states. Some users don't even know about that. They don't care yet, but when they do, it's there. So the version control is all built in. At the beginning of your project, great time to import data from your existing system. Read in your SOLIDWORKS parts or assemblies if those provide a good starting point. At the end of the project, you can export from Onshape and put the Onshape files back into PDM if that's something your company needs. That can be a great way to um, a great way to uh, to work. So kind of imagine it, look at your project portfolio. You've got a few projects going on at various phases in, in SOLIDWORKS or any other system. Keep those where they are. Bring on shape in on a new project. Can we be used on an existing project? Sure. Could you make a part here or a sub-assembly? You can do that too, but best thing is try us on a project and see how it goes. And see if we can help you design faster. That's what people are finding. Um, and what they'll find is it's worth it to, you're going to have to add another system. There's no way around it if you want to experience the benefits. But that's true in every computing and CAD migration I've seen in the last 35 years I've been at it. And let it, oh, also reach out to us. We can help. Reach out in the forums, hit the feedback button, talk to our support team, contact us. We have a customer success team. We can arrange the training you might need. We even do on-site work increasingly with customers. We have partners that can do training and consulting. So um, let us know. We can help you with that project. There's also a lot of questions about weldments and our thoughts on weldments. Uh, great topic. I'm just going to take a moment to remove it. It's a little warm in here. <laughs> and so I'm just going to remove my sweater. Um, so great topic. Uh, weldments is definitely in our vision, something that we expect that users would, would need to be using and um, and you'll you know you'll definitely see things um, in the area of weldments in our future. Nothing to announce right now. I have seen, I'll also mention, I have seen a couple industrious individuals write some pretty useful tools in what I would call weldments or things very similar to it using our feature script language, writing their own tools that work exactly the way that person wants to set up frames and uh, cuts and corners and so forth. Um, that's something that there's a, probably a few of you out there that would be pretty interested in trying. Check out the feature script library. We got lots of open source code on there uh, that you can you can pick up and build from. And uh, you can get in touch with Darren or me if you want to see some of those examples. But those are not commercially shipping products. Those are not things that we've we're offering as part of our product suite. But I'm letting you know that users are doing some cool things with feature script in that area. We'll get to those weldments someday. So there's a question about our Onshape Enterprise offering and uh -huh. when that will be available. Okay, so we're working on, on that, um, our Enterprise offering. We have Enterprise um, today. Um, enterprise is a um, blanket term for when we go in and offer services and customization around some of our larger customers. So it, it is shown on our website, and if you call us and you have typically a larger install, we can set you up with with that, but that would again largely be services and customization, 
maybe some feature script, that kind of thing right now. In the future, we plan to um, introduce some, some enterprise product features, but I want to assure you those will not be modeling features. Those will be features for administering, controlling groups of users that you'd find in a corporation that will give some very, very good benefits to people who manage teams, analytics and controls, and set up an administration of users in corporate larger team environments. Not CAD features. We're not, we're not going to take better geometry and reserve it for enterprises or something. Hopefully that's a good enough answer. Stay tuned. Um, hopefully you'll hear more about it in, you know, in, um, in a reasonable amount of time, let's say that. Uh, let me comment on this. There, there's a lot of questions about how we work with other CAD system data. And the questions are, you know, can we import or export? And we do read a number of uh, native CAD files, including SOLIDWORKS, parts and assemblies, ProE Creo. Um, we read Inventor and um, uh, Parasolid for NX. And, we, Darren's we get, forgetting and, we, and Rhino. Go to the website, man. We, yeah, I have to go to the website. And we update these And OBJ. Regularly. We read OBJ. And we read now. OBJ yeah, now. So that's a native format. Um, and we do write um, all the neutral file formats, including Parasolid, but we also write SOLIDWORKS assemblies um, as well. So the thing that I do want to point out, though, people are asking, do we read the features? And the answer is no, but we do have a robust direct editing suite of tools, and we yeah. feel these are very important. Yeah, uh, great, great comment, Darren. By the way, uh, those of you who have been in the business a while um, know that um, there are no two CAD systems that exchange feature information at all, unfortunately. Um, it's, a, it's a really hard problem of semantics as well as just uh, data formatting, but I'll leave that. But, um, Darren's right. Uh, we have fantastic direct editing tools. Again, those of you who are users, I don't know if you've ever noticed at the um, um, in the toolbar there, you've got um, you've got uh, in direct editing, you've got I think four commands, right, Darren? It's uh, move face, replace space, delete face, delete space, and modify fill it. That's right. Is that right? Did I get that right? right? You okay. got it right. And I didn't even have it exactly there on the website, but I got them because I'm big fans of those tools. You also need to understand that in addition to those four tools, we've got these amazing create selection options. I don't know how many of you have seen that, where you can select patterns, you can select uh, groups of fillets, right? What are those? all those options that pull down? Right. So what we try to do is give you tons of power with direct editing without paying this huge UI overhead of, of all these crazy options and things that, that fill, fill it up. With, with technique, there's great technique. So what the bottom line is with direct editing, you read in models from another system and you can make some incredibly powerful changes um, using our direct editing tools, even though you don't have feature information. Last user I met was on Friday. It's been Friday since I, I met one of our users. And he got up, presented here. Remember what he said, Darren? He said, I don't like to work with features. I prefer to work with direct editing changes. And he loves our direct editing tool set. So, and also, you know, we, we went out of our way to give you good support for Boolean workflow, um, things like split. Those can be handy, too, in those situations. So, yeah, would it be great if we had all the feature history? Sure, but you're not stuck. You read in those models and get to work with them. And, again, reach out to us. Reach out in the forums. Um, uh, reach out uh, to us to let you help you with those. If you need some training for that, we can arrange that. There, check out the direct editing tools on the right side of the toolbar. Very powerful. Can't wait to see what some of the users do with those in Feature Script too. Those are going to be good. Someone's asking about our mobile uh, adoption, and are we seeing that mobile is becoming mainstream in in CAD? Um, yes, we're seeing mobile become quite mainstream. Um, I think the last time I looked, about one in six on-shape sessions were on phones or tablets. Of course, we run completely on iPhone, iPad, Android phones and tablets. And uh, people are not, the other question I get is, well, they're just doing viewing, right? They're not just doing viewing. They're doing editing. In fact, there's a story um, in the recent Star Trek movie. We can, we're now allowed to say this, right, Darren? I can say this. You can say it, sure. Yeah, this this is a user that gave us um, some permission to talk about. He was working um, on special effects in that movie using Onshape, and he um, 
he was working on his tablet on site and making not just not just viewing things, but actually editing things too. And so we're seeing more and more of that happening. I don't need to tell you how much more work in general is being done on mobile. Um, and so we're seeing that. So yes, we're seeing users say, I was running, you know, there's always a story. I, it starts, I didn't think mobile would be useful until it was. <laughs> you know, and they're, they're running through the airport, they're sitting in their truck waiting for a meeting. And, and what's it about? They're getting some work done in a window of time and with a speed that they couldn't do before. Is it, are, they, are they saving weeks at a time? I don't think so. But it's the difference between making that minor edit to the part while they're sitting in their truck, while they're sitting at the beach bar, while they're watching their kid's soccer game, at night on their spouse's you know, iMac at home. They're getting that edit done instead of waiting until the next day or the day after. And those little time savings are a big part of what Agile's about. It's about, as users tell me over and over, I don't have time for that anymore. I don't have time to wait until people are expecting to grab it and go. It's your choice how much modeling to do on here versus on your browser. But yes, people are we're super pleased with the one in six session rate. And we think that's incredibly high. And we're super pleased with the amount of editing that's going on um, on mobile. Then in general, <laughs> there's an interesting question about um, our kernel, and someone asked, "Why did we choose Parasolid?" Ah, the other great, great question. I'm speaking next week at the Parasolid conference, so it's, it's timely. Um, so why did we choose Parasolid? Well, we wanted to build the best new CAD system we could. We knew from the beginning it was going to be full cloud and full mobile, and we said, "Let's look at everything out there." So why did we pick Parasolid? First, of course, is it's got an incredible, incredibly deep 3D capability for modeling. You know, you, you, you know, you know, I know, we have to model your parts, we have to model your assemblies. It's great. What people may be less aware of, a lot of people know that, what people may not be as aware of is how well it runs in a cloud environment. For us, that was one of the questions we had, is could we build this modern distributed cloud system using Parasol? Answer, yes, works great. Thirdly, Parasolid is an awesome business partner from a support standpoint. You guys don't see this directly because you rely on us for support, but we rely on Parasolid for support. And when we contact their team, they do a great job solving hard problems with us, working with us cooperatively. Um, that's really important to us. And then finally, we were very impressed with their vision. The Parasolid is, it, while well, it's, it's a mature technology, it is not standing still. They are constantly working hard at Siemens components to add great new capability. This vision they have for um, convergent modeling with the facets and the VREP together is an awesome vision. And it's, it's bold and comprehensive and complete and impressive. And so there are a lot of reasons, but when, the, when our team added it up, we just felt Parasolid would be the best tool and the best partner of choice to accomplish what we set out to do with Onshape. There's a couple questions about our business, and, and the questions are about the number and growth of our professional user base. Yeah. So, well, we're, we're super pleased with the, we don't, we don't release our sales numbers, but we're super pleased with the growth of our professional base right now. Um, we have, we have um, a lot of people, it, by the way, I'll also say it's not just the growth of the pro users that's been super rewarding for us. It's also um, to see them actually get into production. Because as I tell the team around here, the job tell you something. The job is to take you from where you are, maybe asking questions about what's this on shape about, why would it be better for me, all the way through to selling, but then beyond selling to get into success and customer success. So not only are you meaning, which to me means you got a real product built and you you, you did it better than you could have done it in your old CAD system. And that's what it's all about, and so I'm especially happy to see that happening, you know, and and to see our, our pro users telling me, again, we had one in Friday, he couldn't even show the, the, the employee base, it's, it's so sensitive, he showed us pieces of it, but not the entire product, as you recall, Darren, um, and uh, that's fine, but, uh, you know, we're making a difference in his business, and that's what it's all about, so, again, um, uh, no numbers to release, but, um, 
take a look in the community at large and you, you get an idea of the presence and footprint we have and uh, super excited about the customers. If you want to see some of our customers, we can't talk about or you, we can't name any of our customers without your permission. The ones that have given us permission are on our website, um, many of whom we've written case studies about. Um, any of you who are interested in us promoting you as an Onshape customer on our website, we're happy to do that, but we need your permission. We can't say one word about you <laughs> until you give us permission. That's, that's what we do. Okay, so let us know. There's some great stories there. Check out the Scott Renewable story. That's a great new one that was recently published, Undersea um, Power Turbines. Really cool application. Globally distributed team. Had old CAD, needed to work faster. Wanted to try more innovative ideas. And the quotes that I see from Scott is about saying, hey, you know, we wanted to be free to try more ideas. So, right. um, John, topology optimization, it's something that people are seeing more and more of. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel that that's going to shape sort of the design no pun, process? No pun intended. That's right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. That. Topology optimization, how is that going to shape the design process? Well, I think we'll see more of it rather than less of it um, happening. So every day we see more people doing topology optimization. I think the advent of 3D printing drives some of that. The advent of, of um, uh, you know, of, of cloud computing drives some of that. Um, and pressures to make designs better and better drive some of it. We're going to see more of it. And on shape right now, I would say our shape optimization is happening through partners. Um, we have some great partners, some which are announced, some are coming. Um, and now I've seen people use our STL import to take a shape optimized um, irregular model that comes out of the optimizer and uses the basis to build a precise VREP in our part studio. So I think we'll see more and more of that happening, um, but we are not, you know, it's not an active area for us where we say, hey, we're going to be the ones who, um, who go out there and, and uh, build that right now. There's uh, quite a few questions about model-based definition uh -huh. and PMI data. Yeah. Uh, can you comment on where, our, where they are on our roadmap? So um, MBD and PMI, uh, Yes, would we, um, would we like to have that someday? I would say someday that's of interest to us. Um, it's not something that um, we offer now, as you know. But I think that MBD and is a, um, uh, a certainly legitimate area that we'd love to work on in the future. Okay. Do you have anything to add to that, Darren? No. Okay. Um, there, there's a ton of questions. Uh, more, yeah, I see. I, more, uh, have your health here. more roadmap questions. Um, as far as uh, there's, there's a person asking about ITAR compliant, and they're saying, you know, is there any? Um, how do we address ITAR compliant issues now? Um, so ITAR compliant. Well, uh, the answer is right now we do not have an ITAR certified cloud offering. In the future, is it possible that we will? Yes, it's possible. I would say, you know, there's nothing that would stop us from doing that. But again, this, this falls into one of these things about um, uh, uh, priorities. You know, how do we prioritize that versus sheet metal and the many other great things that we work on for you? You know, all the improvements we're making to modeling, drawings, assemblies, performance, things, mobile, things like that. So, you know, I'd say that's a maybe someday, but, but not a, uh, a now about to happen thing. But we're not against it. You know, we're not saying, oh, no, that would be a bad idea. Sure, it would be a good idea to have that in time. Um, again, what we find when we look at people's processes, though, you got to look at what today's process is. Because I hear customers tell me about their process right now, and I say, tell me what you do now. They say, oh, we've got this very secure server. I say, well, how do you edit? Oh, we send the files out for quote. I'm like, you, you send the files out for quote to vendors all over the world? What happened to all this ITAR stuff? Oh, well, otherwise we can't get the product made. So, you know, you gotta, you got to look at, at um, uh, I think when most users look at our situation versus what they have, they find ours is more secure. But it's not, fair is fair, not ITAR compliant. Um, next question. Yeah, the, um, there's a number of these as well. Uh, any plans for Onshape? to offer its own 3D printer? No, 
<laughs> we're, we're not working on a 3D printer. Um, we have fantastic uh, partners in the 3D printing uh, industry. I would add that we have um, an increasing number of customers in the 3D printing industry um, that are using Onshape to do interesting products in that space. And uh, uh, we're, um, we're very proud of that. And so, uh, um, yeah, next. Yeah, and, and this is interesting as well. It seems like people are appreciating the control we have when we share, but they're asking, you know, can we further refine sharing by roles, maybe share for a certain time period? Uh, have we given any thought to that? Oh, okay. so clearly with our, our platform, we could do things like that. And, and yes, we've given a lot of thought to, and, and, and we've had a lot of our professional users talk to us about things, that, about wish list items. Now that people have true sharing control with Onshape that they've never had with any other system without, you know, now there's no copies, people are asking for things and we're working on them. So I think you'll see, you know, definitely under active development now are improvements to um, give you additional controls for sharing um, and you'll see more of that coming along because it is so popular with um, uh, with our users so yes big yes on that one uh, back to our business someone's asking if you foresee an IPO in the future uh, for you know we're we're just working on on making you we, we work on making you helping you build great products and uh, we don't we don't think about stuff like that right now um, we like I say work on you making great products um, uh, I, I see a couple I want to answer here sure. it's Luke at, at AC class full of students can we tweet absolutely go ahead and tweet um, uh, honored uh, honored to see a tweet and uh, thanks for tuning in um, when will we get configurations? That's another thing that we're working on. And gosh, uh, no one wants to ship that to you uh, more than I do. And uh, Dave Corcoran, our head R and D, and they're they're working hard on that. Definitely something that we'll be getting out as soon as we we can. Um, and uh, maybe time for for um, one or two more questions. Darren, why don't you pick it? You've been reading them. Thank you all for all your great questions. Um, yeah, I, I think we should touch on security again because new questions are coming in. So the the question becomes, how can I convince my boss who has paranoia about uh, IP um, that Onshape is m a much more secure platform? Uh, I think you can point out that, again, look at how you share data now. Like I've said, I've said that several times. You know, you, you can't compare us to some idealized fantasy. You have to compare us to the world you're in now. And if you're like a lot of users, you're emailing files, they're sitting on laptops, like I said, you got to compare it. That being said, some people don't want to change, you know, just like in the old days, I heard that, I used to hear this about Windows. When, when, you know, you, you guys say to me, what do you what do you say when people say, oh, I, my boss doesn't trust that system, or it'll never work, or whatever it is. I say, oh, I got plenty of answers, I got plenty of practice on those questions, not here at Onshape, but 25 years ago when we were building SolidWorks. People said the same thing. And, you know, every, we're not for all users to switch to today, and some people just are going to stick with, you know, the old system a long time. But basically, the message is, I think it's been proven in industry, cloud tools are safer, cloud tools are more secure, cloud tools are easier to work with, and ultimately, you're going to work faster and more innovation. And if your competitor is using a tool like ours, and you're not, you're at a disadvantage, and, and that's just what happens in the world. So, again, compare the security, but also sell on the benefit. That would be what I would say. And uh, uh, one more question? Sure. So the last question is about um, our data management capabilities, and it's how is data management handled within Onshape? I, I think that's a topic may, maybe people are confused on, but it's it's built in at its at its core. So right. How is data management that? handled? I mean, again, look look up in the upper left-hand corner. We have it all built in. So there's version control built in. Everything you're doing is going into a data management database at a transaction by transaction level. It's instantly visible to everyone, so you don't have to share copies of files. And then whenever you want, you can version. You can also use branching to go off and work in parallel on different alternative designs and then merge back together the, the changes you want. 
So the version control is built in. Just go up in the upper left and hit the Create Version button. Check it out online if you need help with it. And with that, I'm just going to say a big thank you to all of you. I'm, I'm really, it's really um, exciting to me to see your tremendous turnout today and all the questions. I wish I had time to answer all of them, but I want to say, um, I, you guys tell me thank you a lot. I want to say right back to you, thank you very much. We, I can see in the name list some old friends and some new ones. I want to say, say thanks to first our users um, and then our partners. I see you out there. I see our press and, and media friends out there who have helped us not only tell our story but shape our story. No pun, in, pun intended. You shape our story. Thank you for all the advice and ideas that you've given us. Um, really appreciate that. You've helped us build a great Onshape and I'll close by saying this is just the start. We're working hard. These questions just make me want to go back and work even harder to continue to build an even better and better on shape every day for you. And that's, uh, that's my promise to you. So thank you.